Eternal God, Father, we're so grateful that you have blessed us to be present. Father, there's some that have gone to be in your eternal presence. Lord, while we wait and remain to be caught up together. Father, we pray that you bring our hearts into the center of your will. And Lord, we pray that the word of God that will come forth today in song, in the written word, in the oratorial word, we pray that it may find a lodging place in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Chapel. Right. Happy Easter season to all of you. Um, as you can tell, we're still in white behind this. That's the reason. Um, also, I, there's a tradition in some of the churches that I've been at. I'm going to say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen, and you're going to say, He has risen indeed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Madeline and I have always believed in what we call God incidences. 
We have experienced many moments in our lives when the hand of God was present. We had met some new friends at the villages, and we all decided to go down to Monterey the week before Christmas to spend some time together and get to know each other. The trip itself was so-so. On the positive side, we had regretfully guessed that because of the time period, there would be few tourists in Monterey, and we were correct. It was, the streets were empty. It was amazing. If you ever want to go there without the crowds, we the week before Christmas. On the negative side, of course, the weather was rainy, no surprise there, and Madeline had a cold. Also, the food at the restaurants was mediocre. We thought mostly because many of the staff were probably on holiday and they probably had the second stringers in the kitchen. Note to self, don't go to expensive restaurants during this time period, or you are almost certainly sure to be disappointed. However, we did all enjoy our time together, and they said they would like to do it again this year. So that was good. Our friends had to leave the, leave the day before us to get home, so we spent the last day there by ourselves before leaving the following day. The weather was clear, it was sunny, and we had no wishes on the way back. Until we were self guilty. Apparently something big was in the road, and I hit it passenger tire. Bang! Immediate blowout. We were able to get to a safe place off the road. Our car is equipped with one of those SOS buttons, and we were able to call for help. It took some time, but they would say, they said they would send a tow truck to us, but it might be two to three hours. Also, the dispatcher told us that they had only probably had room for one person in the truck, and since there were two of us, I would end up having to fend for myself. I tried calling Uber, but they won't pick you up if you're on the freeway. The only way they will pick me up is if I get walk back to an off ramp and get off the off ramp into a connecting street. I decided not to worry about it, just take the car code towed to the nearest Toyota dealership. I should kind of this time I was in a very foul mood. Not to be too blunt about it, but I was in a GD mood. I'm not going to think that is. Madeline has a picture of me with my arms folded in front of the tow truck as they put the car into it. I was not a happy person. And this is where the grace of God comes in and the God is. I have to admit, it was Madeline who pointed these out to me. I tend to be dead. These are the things. Yes, it was an unfortunate event, but let's look at all the good things. We were able to find, if, when the blowout happened, we were able to find a place quickly, quickly where we could pull off to the side of the road and the tow truck had space to pull in to tow the car. When the tow truck arrived, it had a back seat. So I did not have to wait for Uber. <laughs>
not need to fear the future, and so many people today are afraid of the future. They are afraid of Monday. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Total eclipse. All the things that people are saying about the total eclipse and all the negativity. But we are secure in our hope. Because whatever happens in this world, whatever happens in this life, we know that we have a hope beyond this world. And if we can't be excited about that, I have no further good news for you. We don't need to fear the future because we are devoted to Jesus Christ. Our life is geared toward pleasing God. Our lives are geared toward being a representative of Jesus Christ in this world. Our lives are geared with eternity in view. We live with anticipation of being in God's presence. Here are a few points of our identity. You know, you're, you're either identified with right or wrong. There's no middle ground. You either identify as people of righteousness, people of God, or otherwise. A Christian's life is lived visibly. There are no secret saints. Hello. There are no secret Christians. You either are a Christian and your lifestyle identifies you as a believer. The Apostle Paul sought to be an example to other Christians in difficult circumstances when we live for Christ, we strive to magnify the Lord. We want God to be magnified in our lives. We want people to know that we are different and that we love Jesus. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're different. We're peculiar. Hello. We have reason for our peculiarity. Because we love God. We love God's people. And we want God to be magnified in our decisions. Number two, a Christian's life is lived consistently with eternity in view. Consistently, we try to proclaim Jesus Christ with our words and declare Him with our lifestyle. We're not trying to uh, identify with the world, with the way that we think and the way that we see things and the way that we live our lives. We are trying to identify with Jesus Christ because He has called us to what? Be his disciples, be his examples in this world of darkness. Oh, it's getting awful quiet in here. <laughs> but it's okay. When we proclaim Jesus our words and declare him with our lifestyle, we make a difference. Every one of you born again believers, believe it or not, you are making a difference in this world by your presence. Amen. By your presence. Because you are children of light, not children of darkness. Just the fact that you are present in this community, you are making a difference because greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You are making a difference. You may not feel like you're making a difference, but your mere presence is making a difference because the way that you live your life and the way that you deal with your issues, people are watching you. 
and taking note and saying, wow, do you understand what that person is having to deal with or what they're going through? And look at how they're dealing with life. They have not become bitter. As a Christian, we live consistently when we do that. We make a difference. Nothing makes the witness of Christ look worse than hypocritical Christians who value financial, political, and social gain over the truth. Amen. That is the truth. They will compromise just for their worldly security rather than stand in the truth. That sets men and women free. Number three, a Christian's life is united. We don't have to pray for unity. People say, oh, let's pray for unity. We don't have to pray for unity. If we are born again by the Spirit of God, we are united. We're united. We don't have to pray for unity. All we need to do is walk in obedience with the will and spirit of God. They're no longer rangers. The church is a team, a body, with members, where every person is vital to its effectiveness in representing Jesus Christ. God gives each one of us gifts for the benefit of the whole, of each other. The ability to encourage and build each other up in the faith. We have been given gifts and talents. And when we withhold our gifts and withhold our talents, we are not as effective as representing Him. Still getting quiet. <laughs> I must be telling the truth. <laughs> we don't have to pray for unity. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Amen. You don't have to pray for unity. Walk in unity, in the grace of of God that has been given to each one of us. We sometimes may have differing opinions on worship style or biblical trans translations, but with, with what unifies us is the person of the Holy Spirit and our faith in Jesus Christ. That is what unifies us. As you know, our love for Jesus and seeing people experience his forgiveness is more important than divisions. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to experience God's presence in their lives. Because all of us have burdens and concerns and issues of life. And we want to see people experience the freedom of God through the truth of his word. Jesus said you shall know the truth. Well, some people, the people that want truth, the people that desire truth will be set free, but the people that don't want to hear the truth, don't want to be exposed to the truth, they remain in bondage. Truth comes to liberate us. You see, because when you know the truth, you don't have to hide. Hello. You walk in the truth, in the freedom of truth. You see, the devil can't uh, trip you up when you know the truth. You can't be deceived when you know the truth. 
It is when you don't know the truth that you can be deceived. But when you know the truth, you can walk in the freedom of truth, regardless of what people try to sell you. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. Hello. This is a wonderful message. A Christian's life is lived confidently. We are not defined by our current situations. The struggles of our past or the mistakes we've made, we're not defined by those. We're defined by being a representative of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that every person, every man, every woman can be born again. Hello? Every person can be born again knowing the will of God. If any person be in Christ, what happens? They are a new creation and all things pass away and behold, all things become new. But the problem is people still try to hold on to those old things and drag those old things along. And God is trying to release you from those old things that bring you into bondage as opposed to bring you into freedom. We should be free to give expressions of our love for Jesus Christ and not feel uncomfortable when others praise God and, and, and say hallelujah and thank you Jesus as opposed to cursing God, blaming God for their circumstance or their situations. Regardless of what happens in your life and in your affairs, the Word of God teaches and instructs us that all things work together for the good of them that love God and that are called Yeah, everything, even the lots, brother, <laughs> is working for our good. We don't see it, though. We don't see it because we're so accustomed to living our lives the way we see and not the way that God sees. And I haven't gotten to the scriptures yet that I'm going to be sharing with you. <laughs> Our identity and confidence are rooted in Christ. He is the one that fulfills his promises. He is the one that fulfills his promises that we can trust and rely upon. You can't trust and rely upon me to fulfill my promises because I'm fallible, I'm weak, I'm broken, just like the rest of us in here. <laughs> Things happen and situations arise, and then what? But God never gives a promise that he doesn't commit to. If Jesus says, I'm with you always, then I've got to rely upon that. I can't rely upon my feelings. I can't rely upon someone else. I have to rely upon the fact that Jesus is with me in this situation. And that he's going to always be with me. He's not going to forsake me because of, of looking like the wave of opposition is coming. And he says, well, you know, I was with you, but, you know, I got to back up now because things look a little different now. Okay. See, politicians will do that all the time. Uh, yeah. Hello. They'll promise you this and promise you that, but when the wave comes, let me shut up. <laughs> we do 
not need to fear the future. Our hope is in Christ. He is, and he is with us and will never forsake us, nor even when our friends and relatives forsake us. Sometimes because of your conviction in the name of Jesus Christ, your relatives will forsake you. Hello. Because you don't act like them anymore. Because you don't think like them anymore. Because you don't run with them like you used to. Now, they look at you and say, well, you think you're better than us. It's not that. I have been awakened and aroused by the Spirit of God and know that there is a God who loves me and forgives me and has great things in store for my life that I'm leaning on, that I'm trusting, that I'm relying upon. But Jesus will never forsake you. Now for our scripture text. Found in Philippians, Paul wrote this message to the Philippians. We're going to go verse by verse. I probably will only get through one verse. <laughs> And this is the New American Standard Bible that I'm using, translation. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and pleading with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these and the God of peace will be with you. Can we say that to other people? Follow me as I follow Christ. Or do we say, don't follow me. Don't follow me. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. 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 What is always? Always. All the time. Rejoice in the... You have to create a habit of rejoicing in the Lord at all times. You have to develop the habit of praising Him, of thanking Him, of rejoicing, and of remembering how He has blessed you and how He continues to bless you so that out of your innermost being flows rivers of living waters. To rejoice is to take delight in. I take delight in my wife's Cornbread, praise the Lord. <laughs> I rejoice in her pies. Amen. <laughs> Some of us rejoice in our grandchildren and great grandchildren when we see them and be in their company. But there are many things that we find no joy in such as a nation preferring prosperity over righteousness, sowing discord among people, leaders not being truth tellers, and the wave of theft and murder and violence, we cannot take joy in those things. We can't rejoice in those things because when those things are evident, it is a clear sign that people have forsaken their God. On the other hand, as the redeemed of the Lord, we delight in having a relationship with God. 
We delight in each other's company because there's commonality there. That you have the same spirit that I have, the same desires that I have. We delight each, in each other's presence when we come together. It is a celebration, even though it's cookies and coffee. Rejoice. We have every reason to be joyful people. Therefore, we rejoice in the Lord because of his death, burial, and resurrection. You see, if he would have suffered and died and didn't get up out of the grave, what hope would there be? Because death and the grave awaits all of us. But Jesus overcame dead hell and the grave, giving us victory. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. And he has taken the fear of death away from us. We don't fear death. We know that death is a way for us to pass through. Oh, you don't hear me. We pass through death to life in God's presence. You see, God created us for eternity. He didn't create us for, to live so many years and then die and that was it. But to live forever. We rejoice because through the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, we have been made the righteousness before God the Father. We rejoice in the Lord because of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit was not in us, we would be going crazy like the world, ruthless. Taking other people's lives when we felt the urge to exert vengeance upon somebody. We've got out of control. If the Holy Spirit was not in us to reel us back. Oh, you didn't need to say that that way. You didn't need to do that. God isn't happy about what you just did. Lord, forgive me. I repent. And you go to the person and you ask for repentance. We rejoice in the Lord because of our peace. Our peace. God has given us peace through Jesus Christ. We rejoice in the Lord because he is faithful. The Lord is faithful. We rejoice in the Lord because he is our deliverer. He delivered us from the penalty of sin, which is death. He, we rejoice in the Lord because He is our healer. And I was thinking just the other day, I was thinking about the cruelty of, of those who beat Him and pulled His flesh from His back when they whipped Him with 39 lashes, cat and nine tails. They put metal in Stones in between the whip. And all those whippings and lashings that Jesus took for us was for our healing. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's for our healing. We are healed. Not we could be healed. Not that we should be healed. We are healed. And sometimes it hasn't manifested itself. But we walk in the promise and the assurance that we are healed, and sometimes the healing has to be internal before it's external. Amen. We're going to be healed one way or another. We'll be healed here, or we'll be healed on our way up. Come on, somebody, ride with me this morning. Healing is ours. It's the children's bread. We rejoice in the Lord because he is our mediator before God and man. We rejoice 
in the Lord because he is